Welcome to Law Talk Today, a series devoted to bringing you informative and educational programs focused on issues of law, government, and community. Good evening, and welcome to Law Talk Today. My name is Mark Gruber. On this show each week, we talk about various legal subjects, and we interview people in the know, people who are involved in those legal areas, a never-ending list of topics, and I think that you'll find it very interesting. For example, some nights we'll interview a police officer demonstrating a breathalyzer machine, or uh, the director of a battered women's shelter. And uh, each week, it's something new and something interesting. On tonight's show, we have a very uh, good show. It's on domestic violence. And with us tonight are uh, Judge Farber and Carmen Leusa. Judge Farber is uh, a Superior Court judge in Newton, Sussex County. Carmen is an attorney uh, who practices in Sussex County, uh, who does a lot of domestic violence cases. So they're perfect for this show. Welcome, both of you, to the show. Hi, Mark. Hello, Mark. Great, you could, great that you could be here. <coughs> um, Carmen, let's start with you. No offense, Judge. <laughs> Carmen, let's start with you. What is, who, what is domestic violence and who are the victims? What's the definition of the victims and what is domestic violence? Domestic violence is defined as someone who is 18 years old or an emancipated minor who commits one of 14 different criminal acts against a victim. And a victim is defined as someone who is emancipated and they are former household members they had a marriage or regardless of their age they have a child in common with the abuser the defendant um, or they are a spouse or a former spouse of the abuser so those 14 criminal acts range from something as serious as homicide uh, to the lower end of the spectrum, like harassment. Can you, can you um, explain uh, the 14 different acts are criminal statutes? They are. Right? And so is this a criminal? Well, I, of course, I know the answer, but is this a criminal court or is this a civil court? Domestic violence is a civil proceeding in family court. You're accusing somebody of a criminal act but to a civil standard. The standard of proof, which we may get to later, later, is called a preponderance of the evidence. So you're accusing somebody of a crime to a very low standard in family court. Judge Farber, <clears throat> um, you are one of two judges in Sussex County uh, that hear domestic violence cases, or you do all of them yourself? Uh, actually, presently, I'm not the domestic violence judge. Ah. Uh, the new judge that just was appointed, Judge Gilson, does domestic violence, and I do where he has conflicts or we try to fill in. Uh, I had had that calendar a couple of years ago, but I'm not the present domestic violence judge. Now, of the cases that come before you, or have come before you, uh, what, what types of domestic violence cases do you see more, more of? I think the, although uh, Carmen has told you that there are 14 different statutes that we're dealing with, uh, uh, more often than not, we're seeing um, either stalking, uh, terroristic threats, um, assault, and then almost like a catch-all harassment. Harassment is the one that almost every domestic violence complaint that we see has that checked off. And of the people that would come into your court, um, <clears throat> what, who are they? Are they the older people, younger people? Are they male, female? They cross they all the spectrums. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmen has described that uh, more often it's uh, either a married couple or a couple that have a child together. Uh, it can be people that were in a dating relationship together. And as he also indicated, it can be just household members. So you could have uh, mother-daughter, mo mother-son, father-son. Uh, you could have brothers. You could have sisters, um, as long as they uh, continue to live in the same household together. Are you able to just generalize and say, I see more of married people or dating people than mother, fa mother, daughter? I think the most common are <coughs> the married couples. Yes, yeah. you, would, you, you would think. 
Um, Carmen, how is a domestic violence uh, case started? Uh, before we get into the courtroom, let's say, uh, how does somebody file one? How does it get started? It can really start one of two ways. In the stereotypical example where there's an incident in the evening, someone may call the police, the police arrive at the home, the police may escort someone back to the police department, they can call a municipal court judge any time of the evening, any time of a holiday, a weekend, and a municipal court judge can issue a temporary restraining order, typically after an interview on the telephone. During normal business hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, someone can seek and apply for a temporary restraining order by appearing in the Superior Court. And that's where we go over to you, Judge. Somebody during court hours, I guess that's between what? Is 8, it? 8.30 to 4.30. 8.30 to 4.30. Um, how does a person initiate that? Uh, they come into the family division, which is uh, right at the ground level of the uh, building, at least in our courthouse. Um, they meet with uh, family staff. Uh, they uh, tell what their complaint is, and the complaint is committed to writing. And uh, once the complaint is committed to writing, the staff bring them upstairs to the courtroom, and uh, they make an application for the first step is a temporary restraining order. So those, <coughs> those, um, those persons actually f fill out a complaint, and then appear before you or the judge that's hearing those cases on that day. That's correct. And so they need to be prepared uh, for a very quick hearing. I mean, it is a hearing. It's we a hearing. We swear them in, yep. and we take testimony from them. So we take testimony just from them. It's a that first proceeding is a one-sided proceeding. It's just the victim who's telling their side of the story. Um, I think. I, in terms of what we would call due process. It seems almost unfair to some, some extent, but uh, what's the purpose of having a hearing with only one side? Uh, the, I think the policy decision behind the statute um, is that uh, you have had, at least in theory, potentially an incident where uh, there has been domestic violence under any of the statutes, and uh, you want to immediately put in place the protections of the Domestic Violence Act uh, through certain restraints and other relief that you're allowed to do through the statute. Uh, and in terms of the due process, that's protected by the statute providing that uh, the hearing, the final hearing where both sides are present, has to be within 10 days. So there may be this 10-day window where um, there's a temporary restraining order and it might ultimately be dismissed, but at least for that ten, at the end of the 10 days, the other side gets a chance to be heard. Okay, so it's <clears throat> that one-sided hearing, if I can call it that, is for immediate protection where it's needed. That's correct. Right? Um, now, well maybe this is for Carmen. If you, if, what advice would you give to someone who's filing a, for a, a temporary order when they go to court? What should they do to prepare for going to the family law the family intake or domestic violence intake and filing that, co that initial complaint? What I would do is I would try to get as much information together before I get to court. Because like Judge Barber indicated, it is a hearing. You're going to be sworn in, the court is going to take testimony from you, and domestic violence will take into consideration the prior history between the parties. So if somebody has evidence of a prior domestic violence incident, that could be a photograph, it could be a broken appliance, a broken telephone, they should bring that evidence with them to court. They should also get as much advice as they can before going to court. Um, there are domestic abuse services that are available, private agencies. They can often give you some insight. Uh, I would always recommend that they speak with an attorney. Uh, 